I use guidelines a lot when I'm out sketching and I love going out sketching so this lesson is to show you the different ways that I use things called guidelines. I'd like you to print off the lesson notes attached to the lesson and also the prints of the exercises that I've given you because it's all about practicing these little exercises and once you've got the hang of it it's very easy to draw absolutely anything. So the first thing we're going to do is draw an egg shape and just get the, uh, the tilt of the egg going in the right direction and then of course what you do to that is you add a, a head, so a circle. So here we're drawing a chicken and by basing it on an egg shape with a circle and then start drawing in where you put the eye and extend it and put the beak in and um, then you've just got to continue around this curve put in a bit of a tail find the upright for the leg put the wing in like that and you can see how easy it is once you've got the basic guidelines there to help you to actually get the shape roughly how you want it uh, to be so that's just doing the exercise with the chicken and um, of course you can then rub out all the lines that you don't want such as these and tidy it up and um, there's your chicken. I've also given you an exercise of doing a cockerel or a rooster once again based on uh, the egg shape and just getting his leg into the right position like that. And once you've done that, you can start adding some details such as the head and the beak. And use your, your pencil quite lightly so that you can rub out anything that you um, are not too confident about drawing. But once you've got those details in, it really is very, very easy to almost join up the lines and um, start to draw around the shapes that have helped to give you the basic um, form of the uh, the rooster. Here I'm just putting in his wing and of course going in and putting in some tail feathers like that. You straighten some lines, you curve some lines, um, come back in, put his beak in. Of course I'm drawing very very quickly but um, you take your time and get it accurate and once you're happy with it I get to put a foot in there. Uh, you can just rub out whatever you um, don't need. I've also done one of a rabbit. I'm not going to draw that. I'm actually going to draw a giraffe for you. So I've got a photograph of a giraffe. Actually two giraffes, but I think um, this giraffe is a lot clearer. So I'm just going to have the view of that giraffe and show you how, by using these guidelines, I can um, have a go at drawing this rather beautiful creature. I'm going to start off by getting the direction that his head is pointing in, like that, and also the angle of the neck. And then using those guidelines, I'm going to just drop in two circles like this, very, very loose and very light, um, which are going to be rubbed out at a later stage. We've got his, um, well, they're not actually horns. They're made of uh, matted hair. But just to give you some idea of the general shape, I'm putting a line in where I'd line up his eyes like that and um, get the nose in like that. I'm going to go in and draw first one eye and just get that into position like this. And then swinging across that line, just find where that eye is. And this photograph's not very clear, but... Um, so I come from Africa, so I have seen these creatures up close and personal. They're absolutely delightful. I see a lot of them in zoos in this country. And uh, you can feed them in some of the zoos. And they've got lovely long tongues. They're usually black. And kids love feeding giraffes. I think you can get up onto a platform and even pat them and stroke them. They are wonderful to get close to. Can you see I'm using a straight line to just get that ear in and now I'm going to look at the space between the horn and the ear so it's that shape, that negative space that's going to help me to find where that horn is and then if I look at the space between the ear and that horn 
is going to help me to just get this one in position as well. Then I've got to look at the space in between the two horns. So they go up like that. And they have these little tufty bits at the top here. And of course this goes like that. I want it to look too much like Disney, but uh, I guess you can't really get away from that. A little bit of shading now, so I'm going to put my pencil flat and just go in and get some of that shading there in. And this side seems to be catching a bit of light. Let's find his nostrils. His nostrils look like they're over here, so it's quite close to there. So I'd say his nostrils are about here, and the rest of it is his upper lip. Also, a glorious long tongue is in there somewhere, but we're not getting a good view of that. Now, if I come back to the eye, that is where the beginning of the neck is. Can you see that? The eye is there, and that's where the neck starts, and the neck underneath starts just under his chin over here. So a very quick sketch like that. He's got a lovely dark patch in the center of his forehead here. So I'll just drop those bits of detail in as well. And of course, lovely dark shadow inside the ears and this side as well. And, you know, at this stage, you can rub out some of those guidelines that you've put in before, just so that um, you can see if you're getting the animals look anything remotely like it should be. They've got these lovely great big um, patches of pattern on them and so I'll just go in and uh, do that. Of course every giraffe has got its own pattern and uh, that helps the uh, baby giraffes to find their mothers, especially around the legs the pattern is a lot different. Of course we can just quickly turn those in and that gives you some idea of how to very quickly have a go at using guidelines to help you to uh, capture the animal. I'm going to show you a couple of sketches that I've done exactly the same way when I went out um, to Eton, which is not that far away, and they rescue swans off the River Thames. And they had a whole lot of swans um, in containers that were recuperating from swallowing um, bits of fishing line and lead and stuff. Of course these birds didn't stand still for a moment but this was really using those circles and lines off the guidelines to capture uh, the images in front of me. This one was asleep so he was fine so was that one but these others kept on moving. However when they're preening they seem to come back to the same shape so although you might start off uh, drawing one bird and he'll move Another bird might take up that same position, so you do have a chance to have another go. Um, there was a chap standing there playing the most amazing, amazing musical instrument. It's called a string guitar. So while he was playing, I was busy drawing him. <laughs> I had to ask him to hold his hands still so that I could get uh, his hands into a position. But he was quite pleased with the end results, and so was I. I'm going to show you now a painting that I've done of a giraffe. It's painted in pastels. And um, this was done for a demonstration for an art group. And I did the entire painting in an hour and a half. And the colours are quite bright, but I think you can see by ba basically using the guidelines that I've just shown you how to use, you can get the shape of the giraffe very quickly. And then it's over to you what sort of colours you want to use to actually... Um, to colour him in. I used purples and blues but then uh, that's what I felt like painting so that's what I painted.